So um, we saw that energy, the internal energy, E, is equal to Q plus W. Q is heat, and W is work. So energy equals heat plus work. Um, another way to represent the internal energy is with a U. So delta E and U are two symbols for the same thing, which is the internal energy. And the internal energy is the, all the kinetic energy and all the potential energy within a system. So um, when we're talking about the change in energy, we're talking about energy being exchanged between the system and the surroundings. And when that happens, when a chemical reaction occurs and it gets hot and it's heating up its surroundings and it's exchanging energy, there are two ways that it can exchange energy. One way is heat, which is the example we're talking about, things getting hot as the reaction gets hot. Another way is through work. So um, systems can exchange energy through heat and through work. So delta E equals heat plus work, Q plus W. So the system and the surroundings, again, the system and surroundings can exchange energy in two ways, through heat, they can heat up and cool down, or through work. And work is when they move, like the, the water wheel. All the, all the particles moving in the same direction makes the water wheel spin. That's an exchange of energy. Heat is the exchange of thermal energy between a system and its surroundings. So two particles hit each other, a green one and a red one, and they come together and they start... Uh, they heat up, so they start going faster. And as they start going faster, and they hit the walls of the container, they hit the, the walls of the glass beaker that they're in, the particles in the glass beaker start vibrating faster because they're getting hit by all of these particles inside the beaker. So they start travel, they start moving faster. And as the particles in the beaker start moving faster, they bump into the particles in the table that it's sitting on, and they make the particles in the table start vibrating faster. So heat is the ex this exchange of thermal energy. The particles hit the glass, the glass hits the table, the table hits the air. All of these particles are bumping into each other, exchanging thermal energy. Heat exchange only occurs when the system and surroundings have a difference in temperature. And temperature is the measure of thermal energy within a sample. So if I have a sample and all the particles are bouncing around in there and I put a thermometer in, all the particles are going to bounce into the thermometer and hit the thermometer. And as they hit the thermometer glass, then the glass is going to vibrate more. And as the thermometer glass vibrates more, it's going to hit the mercury inside. And then the mercury atoms are going to vibrate more. And as they do, their volume increases and that makes the thermometer go up so that it looks like it's getting hotter. So when you're measuring the temperature of something, you're measuring how hard those particles are hitting the glass. How fast are they going? How much momentum do they have when they run into the thermometer glass? So that's a measure of thermal energy, how fast the particles are going, how hot something is, its temperature. So when I put two things that are different temperatures together, heat flows from the hot one to the cold one. And that's always the direction it goes. Heat always goes from something that's hotter to something that's colder until they reach the same temperature. So temperature and heat are different. Temperature is an average uh, kinetic energy within a sample. So the temperature of something is just a property of that substance itself. Heat, on the other hand, is the exchange of thermal energy. So if I have um, an ice cube and some hot water, the ice cube is at zero degrees C and the hot water is at 90 degrees C. So they each have their own temperature. But when I put the ice cube into the hot water, heat begins to be exchanged. So Heat is when two systems that are not at the same temperature come into contact and thermal energy starts to move from one system to the other. We call that heat. Temperature is what happens when I put a thermometer in a sample and all the particles run into the 
run into the thermometer and they make it go up and you can measure how fast the particles are going. So when I measure how fast the particles are, are moving in a sample, that's the temperature. But if I put something cold into that sample and then the particles bump into the cold thing and the cold thing starts moving faster and the other particles start moving slower, that's called heat. Now they're exchanging thermal energy. So in one way, putting the thermometer in there is kind of like heat, right? You're taking the temperature of this sample, but you put the thermometer in to take the temperature. But to do that, the particles in that system have to bump into the glass and the thermometer, and the glass bumps into the mercury, and the mercury goes up. That's an exchange of heat. The system is exchanging heat with the thermometer, and that's how we measure temperature. So we measure temperature by exchanging heat with the measuring with the temperature measuring device, the thermometer. The heat capacity is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of a given amount of substance by one degree C. Now that's a lot of words to say that if I have some amount of water and I'm heating up that water and I'm watching the temperature and the temperature goes from 20 degrees C from to 21 degrees C, it goes up by one degree. How much heat did I have to put into the water to make it go up by one degree C? That's what the heat capacity is. It's how much heat do you have to put into something before its temperature changes. Some substances, if you put heat into them, their temperature changes really fast. Some substances, if you put heat into them, their temperature changes very slow. So they have different heat capacities. So here's the heat capacity of some different substances. The first several are metals, lead, gold, silver, copper, iron, aluminum. These metals in general all have low heat capacities compared to ethanol, which is a liquid, that's um, alcohol, what's in uh, beer or vodka, and water. These two liquids have a much higher heat capacity than all of these metals do. And aluminum has a much higher heat capacity than lead and the two, two metals. So if I put 100 joules of uh, energy into a gram of lead, the temperature will go up by some amount. And if I put 100 joules of energy into one gram of aluminum, the temperature will go up less. And if I put 100 joules into a gram of water, the temperature will go up even less. This is how much energy I have to put in before the temperature changes by one degree. If I put in this much energy, then lead will change by one degree. If I put in that much energy, then water will hardly change at all. So I have to put in a different amount of energy to make a substance change its temperature. That's called that substance's heat capacity. So I can calculate the heat, which is the amount of energy transferred, um, by determining the mass of the system the heat capacity of the substance in that system, and the temperature change. So I'm heating up water. So I would look at my table. I have the heat capacity of water, 4.184 joules per gram per degree C. These are the units. So I'm heating up water. I'm heating up 100 grams of water. I know the heat capacity from the table, and the temperature changes by 20 degrees. So I can figure out how much heat that water has absorbed. 100 grams times the heat capacity times 20 degrees. That's how much heat it's absorbed. Q equals mc delta T. Uh, the triangle, we pronounce that delta. And delta means the change, the change in something. So delta T is change in temperature. Delta P is change in pressure. Delta V is change in volume. So delta just means change in. So the change in something is the final minus the initial. So if the final temperature is 25 degrees and the initial temperature is 20 degrees, then delta T is 5. So I, oops. So if I'm heating up some water, 
and I heat up the final final temperature is 25 and when I started out the water was 20 then delta T the change in temperature is 5 degrees I was heating it up how much did you change it by changed it by 5 degrees So if I multiply the temperature change times the heat capacity times the mass, that equals the heat. How much heat is lost when a 155 gram block of iron is cooled from 185 degrees C to 25 degrees C? The heat capacity of iron is 0 0.449 joules per gram per degree C. So Q equals MC delta T. How much heat? So Q, we don't know. That's what the question is asking. 155 grams, that's our mass. Uh, 185 degrees C to 25 degrees C, that's delta T. And the heat capacity of iron is this that's C so remember whenever we start one of these problems you always want to look at the equation and the information you're given and try to label your information so I'm trying to solve this equation Q equals M C Delta T my M is hundred and fifty five grams C is 0 0.449 joules per gram per degree C. And my temperature says I'm cooling this. It's cooling from 185 to 25. So if this is cooling down and it starts at 185, and then when it's all done, it goes to 25, then where did it start? It started here. This is temperature initial. And it says it's cooled from 185 to 25. So this is where it ends. T final. So this is tricky when you're trying to calculate delta T. You have to read the equation, read the question really carefully to see where did the temperature start and where did it end. So here it started at 185 and it cooled down and then it went down to 25. So 25 is final and delta T is always T final minus T initial. It's always final minus initial. So final is 25, initial is 185. So let's make sure our units cancel out. Grams cancels grams in the denominator. Degree C cancels degree C. Degree C minus degree C just equals degree C. So I'll, I'll have one value there after I do that subtraction. And what I have left is joules. And that will be the value of heat. Heat is transferred in joules. That's the unit of heat. So let's plug these numbers into the calculator. 155 times 0.449 times 25 minus 185. Negative 11135.2 joules. So when something is losing heat, then Q is negative. So this is cooling down, so it's losing heat. Q is negative. If something is gaining heat and it's heating up, then Q is positive. So here, this is losing heat, 11,135. So let's see, I look back at my numbers here. I've got three sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs, three sig figs. So I'm limited to two sig figs in my answer. The one tells me to round down. 
So my final answer is 11,000, negative 11,000 joules. Determine the heat capacity of an unknown metal if a 235 gram block absorbs 18 kilojoules of heat and the temperature increases from 50 degrees to 250 degrees C. All right, so mm, determine the heat capacity. That's C. C, I don't know. 235 grams, that's mass. 18 kilojoules, that's heat. Q equals 18 kilojoules. And here's my delta T information. All right, so Q equals MC delta T. I'm trying to solve for T, excuse me, I'm trying to solve for C. So let's divide by M times delta T so I can get C all by itself. So the M and the M cancel and the delta T and the delta T cancel. And I move those over to the other side. And then I get C equals Q over M delta T. Q is 18 kilojoules mass is 235 grams and delta T is final minus initial the temperature increases from 50 to 250 so what's final 250 initial 50 All right, so um, let's make sure. Oh, our, none of our units are going to cancel here because the heat capacity has units of joules per gram per degree C, or in this case, kilojoules per gram per degree C. So let's put these numbers into the calculator. 18 divided by 235 divided by 200. C equals 0 0.00038297 kilojoules per gram per degree C. Okay, now it says identify the unknown metal. So we're going to need a table of heat capacities because this number that we just calculated, that's specific for this substance. So let's go back here to our heat capacity. See, all of these numbers are unique for those substances. So we can't see our number down here. And these units are joules per gram per degree C and our units are kilojoules per gram per degree C so let's change our units so that we can actually compare these numbers so if I want joules instead then I have to go for I have to convert from kilojoules to joules and there's 1000 joules in a kilojoule. So then if I'm trying to convert kilojoules to joules, KJ and KJ cancel, and I get 18,000 joules. So 18,000 joules, just also can multiply our number down here by a thousand, equals 0 0.38 Two nine seven nine joules per gram per degree C. Okay, so let's go back and look at our table again. Let's get rid of some of this stuff we don't need here. All 
All right, so according to the table, the one that looks like it's the closest is copper. If I round this up, oops. If I round my number up to three sig figs, I get 0.383, which is pretty close to 0.385. So I'm going to say this unknown metal is copper. So the heat capacity of water is very high. Water can absorb a lot of heat before its temperature changes. So this is one reason why coastal regions temperature is regulated and it doesn't get very hot in the summer and it doesn't get very cold in the winter because in the summer all of the extra heat instead of heating up the air the extra heat gets absorbed by the water and it gets stored in the water and in the winter instead of the air being very cold that extra heat that was stored in the summer can come out of the water and can heat up the air a little bit so the water acts as a a reservoir for heat. So we talked about transferring energy by, um, by heat. And remember, there's two ways that we can exchange energy, that systems and surroundings can change ener exchange energy. They can exchange energy by heat, and they can exchange energy by work. So exchanging energy by heat is what we just did. Q equals mc delta t. If we're exchanging energy by work, then we calculate that by negative P delta V, which is the negative pressure times the change in volume, which is vinyl volume final minus volume initial, which is always what, what we uh, will use for delta. So remember, work is when all the particles move in the same direction, and it causes something to move. So in a piston, for example, when gas is combusted, gasoline is combusted, and turns into gases, and it creates um, a pressure, then that pressure pushes the, vol pushes the piston up, and that causes the volume to change. So that change in volume, we call that work. The gas, that combustion, is doing work on the engine. It's making the piston move up. So that work, we can calculate the amount of work that's being done by multiplying negative pressure times the change in volume. So to summarize, when the system and the surroundings are exchanging energy, they can exchange energy as heat, Q equals MC delta T, or they can exchange energy as work, work equals negative P delta V.